So, all right, everything should be visible to you uh, online uh, again. Uh, I will have an, an eye on the chat. So uh, feel free to ask any questions, and that goes for you here on campus also. Just interrupt me if there's something that you don't understand or if there is something that you do understand, and, and I just blab on and on about it, so you could move on instead. Uh, but first of all, welcome to 1DV607, Object-Oriented Analysis and Design Using UML. My name is Tobias Olsson, uh, and I have been teaching this course for a few years now. Um, quite a lot of years, actually, since I've been at the university since uh, like 2002 or something like that, so a few years. Uh, this course has not been called 1DV607 for that entire time, but some kind of analysis and design course has been uh, my responsibility uh, mostly throughout these years. Uh, I also teach project courses. So in the web developer program, you will meet me again in, uh, before summer. And some of you will have a project course, the group project course with me. And I'm also quite involved in uh, thesis work for uh, the third year especially. So if you attend the third year, there is a chance that you will have me as a tutor or that I will read your thesis uh, after you hand it in. So we will probably meet again in some way or another. Uh, before I worked at the university, I worked at uh, Massive Entertainment developing computer games. Uh, I think they're called Ubisoft Massive or something like that right now. And I also uh, worked as a consultant at ABB Robotics doing robotics simulation uh, tools. Uh, quite similar domains, actually. So my, my interests in, in programming are towards rendering artificial intelligence, uh, games and gameplay and stuff like that. That was I find uh, fun and uh, like doing in my s quite small spare time. Um, in um, my personal life, I have wife, children, house, car, dog, you name it, I got it. Uh, and that also means that since I have kids, they can become sick quite uh, fast. So if there's some problem and I need to cancel the, the lectures, I will let you know as soon as possible uh, using Slack or, and, or the course homepage. So always look at the course homepage. Uh, uh, let's take a look at the course homepage right now, I think. Some of you recognize this. Uh, I was in Växjö yesterday and introduced the online tools. and. Uh, I think CoursePress is new to most of those students, so we, we took a look at it, and also at, on the tools that we uh, use. So, uh, this looks probably like something you have seen before, most of you. So let's just go through it um, a little bit fast. If you have not applied for the course yet, please do so. So you can become registered and get your CSN funding or, uh, and stuff like that. And also for the hand-ins, you need to be registered as a student on the course. So uh, please do that as soon as possible. There are some requirements to take this course. The most important requirement that I have is that you have passed some kind of programming, object-oriented programming course. I think most of you here in Kalmar is, uh, are supposed to have uh, finished the C-sharp course. So that is perfect. And in Rekwe, they have uh, mostly the Java course, and that is also uh, good. Uh, the course itself is not bound to any particular language. You can use any language you want during the workshops, uh, as long as it's object-oriented and you have a good amount of languages to, to uh, choose from. However, the code that I will be producing during the lectures will be in Java this year. 
Last year I did C sharp, so if you really don't like Java and would like to see C sharp, you can uh, look at the code from last year and also look at the lectures from last year if you need to. The programming won't be that uh, advanced and won't use any special language features or, and stuff like that. It will be basic uh, stuff available in, in most object-oriented languages. You should not have a problem uh, doing this. But as I said yesterday in Vecchio, if you're not really comfortable programming, have been doing other stuffs during the summer, uh, do refresh as soon as possible, because we won't be uh, taking uh, a lot of time understanding syntax and stuff like that in your programming language. But we will uh, rather use programming as the tool to understand modeling. So we will do a lot of um, transformations from models to, to code and from code to models and see what this code looks like like a model and see how this model can be transformed into programming. And this means that you need to be uh, fluent in, in, uh, in a language so that you can understand modeling by using programming. As programming is the, the common language that we have, so uh, I will be using this quite a lot. So there will be a lot of coding, live coding on the lectures and we will take a look at models and vice versa. <coughs> so, take a look at the course management. Here you have my contact details. Uh, we have two tutors. Uh, Johan Hagelbeck will be the Kalmar tutor and also online for distance students. Uh, and Josef will be the tutor in Växjö. So these are the people that you will meet during the workshops and you can ask them for help uh, during the workshop hours. And we have course literature. Uh, we have Applying UML and Patterns, the third edition. Uh, you have reading instructions. Some chapters are more important than others, uh, but the other chapters are maybe good to at least uh, take a, a quick look at just to get the whole picture. In the book there is also three examples that are used to uh, explain things. I think those are quite good. So they have a monopoly game, they have a point of sale system and they have a persistence framework that are uh, analyzed and designed and uh, to some extent also implemented in the book. So. That's a really good way to uh, understand uh, even better what he is talking about in these chapters. And for the workshops, you also have some reading instructions, what to focus on. Uh, I think the chapters in parentheses are uh, for the, the examples uh, in the book that are connected to, to uh, to the respective workshop. So uh, maybe a quick look at the schedule could be uh, good. As you probably noticed, we switched uh, classroom from the um, the new classroom here in, in Kalmar is 228. Unfortunately, they could not get the Wacom working with the new equipment. So we had to go back to our old technology and use Connect and Smartboard instead, as I write uh, on the Smartboard and, and, and do sketches and modeling uh, in that way. So my hope is, or our hope is that we will move up into the, uh, the new classroom with the fancy recording equipment and good cameras and stuff like that uh, during the course. So we hope that we can get that, that working. But for the uh, first four lectures, we will be uh, in, in this classroom. And next week, we have no lectures, but rather the workshops start. And the first workshop is, is starting then. So you will be meeting some of your uh, tutors there. So it won't be 
uh, won't be me here, I think, and uh, you should have Josef uh, up there instead. Otherwise, this kind of like pattern of, of two weeks of lectures, one week of workshop, some more lectures, and workshop uh, is repeated. Possibly I will look into getting week 42 and 43 switched, but uh, that is something we can also uh, discuss as the second workshop is uh, by far the, uh, the workshop that requires the most time for you. So, moving on, feel free to ask questions. Uh, the main discussion forum we use is Slack. Uh, you're probably used to it already. Uh, ask any questions there. I will take a look at it throughout the day. And you can, of course, answer questions also. So, uh, I think Slack is a really good platform for contributing to the course if you find something uh, funny or something interesting, please post it um, for everyone to enjoy. can take a look at the syllabus as this is something that is required. Um, let's just open. So it's 7.5 credits, normal uh, computer science. Uh, have some prerequisites here and the objectives of the course. Uh, to understand the concepts and principles of object-oriented analysis and design and be able to develop object-oriented models in UML. Uh, transform objects to uh, models to uh, programming and vice versa. This is maybe the uh, thing that we will be doing mostly. You will have basic uh, knowledge on, on how to use design patterns and how to use refactoring as a method of design. So, some problems in the um, quality of the sound. Okay, uh, what's the problem with the sound? A lot of noise. Okay, I will try to turn the volume a bit down then, I think. So I will just stop sharing for a brief moment. Okay, is the sound better now? I can turn it back a little bit more, I think. Better? Ah, good. So, The syllabus, uh, you should of course uh, take a look at it yourselves so that you know what you are uh, supposed to know and what you are uh, supposed to uh, read. The next interesting thing is how to get a grade in the course. You of course want to finish the course with at least a passing grade and uh, this is done by doing the workshops and handing them in before the deadlines, doing peer reviews and finally doing a, an online exam for the course. So there are a few stuffs that you need to do during the course and towards the end we will have the exam. Uh, 
these are all the dates, so don't be too hung up on them. So, then you plug in your grades for the workshops and the uh, exam, uh, which is your just fail or pass, uh, and then you can compute your final grade. So, let's take a look at the workshop just quickly. The workshop is uh, described for three different grades. Grade two, the passing grade. This is what you do during the course. Uh, the tutoring is mainly focused on the passing grade. The peer reviews that you will be doing is focused on the passing grade. So whatever you do, you do the passing grade first. Then, if you want to, you can move on to higher uh, levels of grade. So you can do for grade three or grade four. Grade three and four are handed in separately towards the end of the course. So you have more time to work on uh, grade three and four if you would like that. And then when you know your grades, you can plug it in here and you can see uh, what final grade you will get. This also means that you can probably find some optimal solution that suits you best. So maybe you do a lot of partying uh, at the beginning of the term. So, well, I go for the passing grade for the first workshop, but then I really work hard on the second and third and have the highest grade for those, and you can still get the A in the course. And you can find, well, I did for four for the second workshop and a little bit higher grade for the third. And I will get a B as the final grade in the course. And so on and so forth, of course. So you can find your level of commitment in the course. And this will be uh, hopefully your final grade also. Uh, if you think this is a, a little bit strange, you should also know that the workshops in themselves are not equal. The first workshop is by far the smallest one. It's not really that hard to get the passing grade. It's more uh, to get you started and uh, not that demanding. So it's valued a little bit less than the other. The second workshop is by far the one that it's maybe not uh, that advanced, but it requires a lot of time, since it's a lot of programming that you will need to do. So it, this will uh, take you some time, especially if you're not really that comfortable in, in programming. And the third workshop is maybe the most advanced one, but if you have paid attention during the course, it should not actually take you that long of a time to do it. So they are a little bit different in character also. Uh, sometimes students do the first workshop, and they find it really easy. And then they think that, well, OK, so the workshops are really easy. And they don't really uh, understand that the second workshop is, is way harder. So have that in mind, that the first workshop is not really uh, indicative of how hard the second workshop will be. So don't get too comfortable. So we will be talking a little bit uh, more about the workshops uh, after we have talked about the uh, lectures. So you can go back and look at the course homepage for 2015, and you can click your way back even further from that page. And this could be uh, good to uh, you that would like to see C Sharp instead of Java, for example. You can take a look at it there. Maybe I will say some, uh, some uh, other stuff during the lectures also for these years. And there's also a playlist on YouTube with at least most of the lectures. I think some recording failed, but uh, most of the lectures are also on YouTube. So you can watch them. Um, yes. We will be using GitHub, or I will be using GitHub to, uh, to distribute the code produced during the lectures. So if you're not familiar with GitHub, 
you get an account and you can contribute uh, because for example we have this small dice game that we will be doing today I hope um, and I did it last year in C sharp so this is probably my code more or less uh, and other students contributed in other languages so we have this for Swift and C++ and PHP and and Lua and Python and Ruby and TypeScript. So if you would like to upgrade the TypeScript version or add your own, feel free to do so. If you have some other interesting language that you would like to uh, contribute with, please do so. Uh, so we can take a look at how this uh, design would be implemented in different kinds of languages. Could always be nice. So uh, I will be using this to redistribute the, the code that is produced during the lectures. And that this year, as I said, I will be using Java. So and we have the live stream. And if you have found it, well, it's connect for now. Maybe we will be moving on to uh, uh, live coding or whatever platform it is in the new, new classroom. Uh, otherwise, you have the, uh, the plan. Here, today we have the introduction. Tomorrow we will be talking about domain modeling. After the first workshop, we will be talking about software architecture, model view controller, layers and components, and we will start uh, with the grasp patterns. We will continue with the grasp patterns after the third, the, the second workshop, and then move on to the gang of four patterns and conclude the course with the object-oriented design principles that will be uh, finishing off the course and tie everything together, I hope. This is the plan, at least. Hopefully, we can um, abide to it. But as I said, anything can happen. Um, you never know. Maybe you have very interesting questions in some lectures, and we will uh, dwell into those. And things will become a little bit off, but that's all right. I think we have uh, quite a lot of scheduled lectures. So we have some, some time on our hands. But this is the plan, uh, and it's the same plan that we used last year, and it worked uh, quite OK. And this is how it will look like. Uh, you have the, uh, the contents of the, the, uh, the lecture. So today, we have the introduction right now. Uh, we will talk a little bit about analysis and design. And we will make the uh, dice game example uh, also. This is basically chapter one from the course literature. Uh, and you also have extra materials there. The course evaluation for 2015. So you can take a look at it if you want to. Uh, unfortunately, it was uh, not that many students that answered it, like 35% or something like that. So after the course, there will be a course evaluation mailed to you. So please fill it in. And this is repeated for more or less uh, every lecture. So I will be distributing some uh, materials to you. You can check out the book. Uh, and stuff like that. So, finally, the workshops. Um, the workshops are quite similar to laboratory exercises. The uh, main difference is that you can do them in groups if you want to, small groups, uh, one, two, or three people, not more than three, if you are four. Uh, companions that usually work together or study together, well, form two groups then. If you are more than three people, uh, there is a high probability that, well, it's hard to, to get everyone to contribute. So uh, you are free to form these groups as you wish, and you can also switch groups during the uh, workshops if you want to. Just remember who you worked with when you uh, 
did the workshops. So, for example, if you are three people doing uh, grade A or grade two for a workshop, you can switch people if you would like to continue work for grade three or grade four on a workshop. So maybe just one person would like to uh, uh, get a higher grade for that workshop, and he can form a new group with other people if he wants to. So you are not bound to your groups uh, if you don't want to. So you will be working in a group. You will be preparing. You can start the first workshop really right now if you want to. Uh, you will be preparing. You will show up on the, uh, the tutoring sessions, ask questions, get help, work some more, and you have another opportunity to ask questions after some time for the workshop. And then you will do a hand-in. This is the first hand-in. After that, you will be assigned the work of two other groups, and you will perform a peer review on their work. So you will take a look at their work for the workshop and critique it. And this is done for the passing grade, the grade two material. And you will send a report to this group, and you will also get two reports that have reviewed your work. And come up with suggestions uh, on what needs to be fixed. And when you have fixed this, you do the final hand-in. And this is what will be examined by me. So you hand in, do peer review, and do the changes, and do the final hand-in afterwards. And this is um, quite a tight, tight little iteration here. Uh, just a few days uh, you have to, uh, to, to do this, especially for the first workshop that's a, a little bit smaller. So these are the uh, at least preliminary deadlines for 2016. I'm always up for, for uh, discussion or, or suggestions regarding these, but this is the plan that I came up with. So in about uh, two weeks, September 13, at 12, you do the first submission of the first workshop. And after that, I will mail the uh, peer reviews to you, and you will get two groups to review. You will do the review, and no later than uh, September 16, at 12, you should have uh, received your reviews and also sent reviews to the other groups. And then you have a few days uh, on you to make fixes and corrections and the final hand-in for uh, workshop one passing grade is September 21st. For workshop two, you have a few more days here between uh, the review and the final submission. Uh, because it's a little bit larger and possibly you need more, more time there. But if you have some uh, ideas on changes for these, I'm, uh, I'm happy to receive them and I can take a look at them and, and uh, see if it, it works or not. So final submission and deadline for examination is the 14th of November. Uh, if you have some uh, passing grade fixes that needs to be corrected, you can hand them in uh, there. Or if you have higher grades. And we will have an extra examination if you uh, for some reason fail some parts that is uh, scheduled to the 27th of November. So the most important thing is that you submit your workshops for the passing grade and participate in the peer review process. If you do that, and if you do the peer review process, you, you have something to work on. If you fail to submit your workshops or 
hand in something that is completely way off uh, or something empty, there is an extra task for you. So then you need to do the extra task of the Yahtzee game. And this is quite a lar large task as it's supposed to encapsulate uh, all three workshops really. So this is like the uh, omtenta. Uh, for the uh, re-exam, you often need to study the whole book once more, and this is the re-exam. You can't really, well, I answered two questions correctly, so I should have some bonus points for those two questions, right? No, that's not how it works, really. But if you have done a really good job on the workshops, maybe the first one and, and the second one and missed the third one for some reason, I will take this into account when you hand in your Yatsi game. <coughs> uh, two reports need to be reviewed for each workshop by each student. Two reports need to be reviewed for each group. So in the workshop you will be getting the work of two other groups. And you will take a look at it and you will prepare a report and send the feedback to that group, respectively. So you can read a little bit more about the peer review process here. And, and basically, I have some, some instructions for you here. And we will, you will be getting some sheets there uh, when that time comes. But this is uh, what I'm expecting, for example, for the workshop one of domain modeling. So you have some instructions here. Uh, maybe the most important instructions is that you should motivate your opinions with proper references. You cannot just state that we think that x is good or wrong or bad. Uh, or that uh, Tobias said that X was good wrong, because I can be faulty, of course. So you should find good references. And the course literature is your starting point uh, of finding a good reference. So you can, uh, can for example, motivate your, your, uh, your opinion of some part of a workshop by saying that well, Larman states that on page on page one, in chapter on page one two three that it's uh, you should do this model like this and you should think like that and well it seems that like you haven't done so so this should be fixed. Uh, Twelve is noon, not midnight. So it's uh, not twenty four hundred hours, but twelve. Uh, at lunchtime. So, you have some things to look out for, and well, it should, of course, be done as uh, good as possible. And remember that you can also say in your, um, when you hand in your workshop, you can, uh, for example, add some, some readme file or something like that to it and ask the other group, the reviewing group, to, well, could you please take a look at this? We're really unsure about this part of our model or our design and would like you to uh, give us suggestions on how, how to resolve this in a better way, maybe. So you can ask the reviewing groups to focus on some parts if you want to. So please use each other as uh, a, a quality enhancing instrument and uh, and take this opportunity to really uh, to really fix your workshops to the uh, best possible standards as you can. So the part three quarters from a workshop get submitted in the end or at the deadline of the workshop. You can probably find the book online somewhere. I won't tell you. <laughs> uh, 
Jakob, I really don't understand the question. <laughs> Okay, you mean the grade three or four. Yeah, the grade three or four are submitted towards the end of the course. So, maybe that was uh, most parts of the instructions for the course itself. So you work on the, uh, you, you use the uh, lectures and the book, you work on the workshops, you hand in the workshops, you participate in the peer review, you do your best and you should probably have a passing grade after the uh, workshops are done. There is also a high probability of you passing the uh, online exam if you uh, participate actively in the, uh, in the workshops because you will learn by doing so. Um, can take a small look at, at the workshop. So the, f the first workshop is a pure modeling workshop. You won't be doing any programming for this workshop. Rather, you will be doing uh, models. And I don't have uh, any requirements for you to use some particular program or something like that. If you find some, some, some modeling program that you think is good, uh, post it in Slack for everyone to, to know and use and try. Uh, there are many, many ways of doing this. Uh, the simplest way is maybe just to use pen and paper and take a photo of your model when you're satisfied. That can be challenging if you have really bad handwriting and stuff like that, but uh, you can, uh, you can make sketches first, and then you can draw your finely printed diagram on paper if you want to. So this is not, not something that you, you don't need any, any computer at all, actually, for the first workshop. The second workshop, as I said, this is by far the, uh, the largest one. You will be doing a from, from the ground up, uh, implementation, design, analysis, design, and implementation of, of a small uh, system. And for the passing grade, you should fulfill all these requirements. So uh, you can, of course, take a look at it right now and just check it out. And you can see, for example, here, you need to have some persistence. For example, saving and loading from a text file. So if you don't know how to do that in your programming language, you can uh, brush up starting now. Maybe some, some uh, requirements are not familiar to you right now, that you need a strict model view separation. Uh, what that actually means is something that we will take a look at during the lectures. So you have some functional requirements, what the system is supposed to do. And you also have quality requirements, what the system should be like or what the design of the system should be like. So you should have this model view separation. You should have good quality of code, naming standards, duplication. You should have an object or in design and implementation. And some uh, refinements on, on what we will be looking at. And you have some more requirements for grade three and some further requirements for grade four. There is only one in the course literature. Yes, that's it is the only book that you will be uh, needing for the course. Uh, I w there are some extra uh, some extra materials for the lectures, maybe, uh, but they, these will be posted uh, on the lectures uh, themselves. But the, uh, the exam, so to speak, is based on the materials in the book. And, and links that I provide to, for example, papers and stuff like that are uh, considered a little bit extra. So I won't be asking any questions on the exam on, on on this paper, for example. But you should, of course, read it and uh, take a look at it.
So in this uh, workshop then, you will need to do some implementation. So you need to uh, decide on a programming language that you're supposed to use and stuff like that. Uh, if you select something really weird, you uh, will probably not get uh, as good help with that from the tutor. So if you select some really strange language or unusual or something like that, could be fun and interesting and good for you, but maybe you're a little bit more on your own, at least regarding programming problems. Uh, however, these are not the focus really for the tutoring, but rather on the design and, and stuff like that. But you know how it is. You can always get stuck in, in some weird programming problem and you need a, a, a pair of fresh eyes just to take a look at it. And that could become problematic if you select some really weird programming language that's, that's uh, hard for the tutor to uh, understand maybe. <coughs> uh, I recommend for the implementation that you select something uh, easy, something that is console-based. Don't overdo it regarding using fancy user interfaces and stuff like that. That is not the focus of the course to do a lot of uh, graphical user interface programming. So uh, it, it's large enough as it is, this workshop. You don't need to uh, make it more complicated than it is. So, and on the third workshop, I will be, uh, you will be supplied with some, uh, uh, some code, a program to begin with, that is uh, semi-working. Semi uh, I have code for uh, C-sharp and, and Java. And you will continue the uh, design and implementation using this code as a base. So, if you select some other uh, programming language, uh, you need to translate these to uh, these one version of these to your programming language first, and then start the workshop. So it will probably be a little bit more work for you. Uh, if you decide to do so, please do share this uh, code with me so I can add it to the repository, and and the students from uh, from in the future can can uh, benefit. So also in this this workshop you will be doing some uh, coding. Questions on the course itself? I think it will be uh, all right. Uh, we should be able to uh, manage this, I think, during these few weeks and uh, get a good grade towards the end, but as you understand, it is your level of ambition that sets your grade. So if you opt for a good grade, you need to commit to doing the workshops uh, for the higher grades also. No questions? All right, let's take 15 minutes of a break then. I think it's uh, about time. So let's take a 15 minutes break. <laughs>